Welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator and welcome back to the Just Flight Piper Arrow 3. In the last video we looked at overhead joins and circuits at Carnarvon in North Wales. In this video we're going to expand on that and uh, do a little bit of pilotage to the north uh, along the Menai Strait before returning back to Carnarvon for an overhead join and a circuit exactly what we did before but just expanding it out to actually complete a proper flight uh, taking off from runway 25 and climbing up to 1300 feet I'll explain the altitudes in a moment Now this this looking around is going to become relevant later on in the flight. I'm actually having issues with track IR, which is kind of limiting me looking over my right shoulder. I'm not quite sure why suddenly I'm having that issue, but that will become relevant later on. So just getting the aircraft set up and rolling onto runway 25. I'm using Rex Weather Force, which is a bit of a mixed bag. Uh, I'm using it because I need access to Windsor Loft data and I, this is the only way I'm aware that I can actually get that information. But it is a mixed bag, there are pluses and minuses to it. The big minus is a bug with FPS, when weather changes it absolutely tanks your frame rate. But it does have the advantage of being able to pick weather conditions that you want to fly in and then go to a, an airport that has those conditions so it's it's kind of worth it as a general replacement to uh, sim weather I'm not quite sure but hopefully it'll fix that bug and then uh, we can uh, talk again about it okay off we go heading bug see a little bit of a kink there I don't know what's going on with that every now and then it just throws a little bit of a kink at you Heading bug set to runway heading. A little bit of back pressure at 70 knots. Trim. I always set it about neutral. I don't set it too far off because it seems really sensitive. Okay, gear up when out of usable runway. Uh, pitching for 90 knots, best rate of climb. 500 feet, setting a 25 square power setting. So 25 on the MP, 25 on the RPM. Just banking a little bit there so looking for 800 feet and at 800 feet which is traffic pattern altitude we turn 45 degrees to the right because we are departing right 45 degree turn to the right about uh, 295 and we continue up to 1300 feet which is the overhead join as soon as we're at 1300 feet We'll make another right turn towards the Menai Strait. This is a fairly standard departure. Now, if you're departing straight out, you will just continue, literally continue straight out. If you're departing to the right, you'll climb up to uh, traffic pattern altitude plus 500 feet. And once at that altitude, then you resume on navigation. If you're departing to the left, you'll turn to the right. And then once you're at 1300 or 500 feet plus traffic pattern altitude, then you'll turn back and head to the left. Of course, the purpose of that is to deconflict with uh, traffic around the airport. Okay, so now resuming on navigation, turning onto the Menai Strait. A little bit high. We're going to bring it back down to 1300 feet. A quick word on altitudes. Standard. Um, traffic pattern direction is, is left generally you can assume a left pattern 1000 feet above ground level or above aerodrome level for uh, traffic pattern altitude and 1000 feet above that for overhead joint altitude it's a little bit different at Carnarvon because at Anglesey which is on the left here there are two RAF airfields and uh, the limit altitude down the Menai Strait to 1500 feet so we're staying below 1500 feet 
for this fight now, back down to 1300 feet. So we're just flying along the Menai Strait. And uh, what we're looking for are two bridges. The first is the Britannia Bridge, the second, I think it's called the Menai uh, Suspension Bridge. And once we reach those, we're going to turn back, fly right back down the Menai Strait, and then look for Carnarvon and repeat the over join and then repeat the pattern to land so as I mentioned this is really an example of how you can take that exercise of flying the overhead join flying the circuit and expand on it so once you become confident flying that uh, that pattern then you can look for uh, landmarks in the area and construct a flight around them just to build up a little bit of confidence and get your technique down here the big challenge with this aircraft I'm, I'm hand flying the aircraft at the moment you could set the autopilot on heading but you'd still have to manage altitude at least if you're flying the aircraft realistically obviously there's a workaround with this aircraft uh, so you can uh, click a hot spot around somewhere around the autopilot area and it will hold altitude for you I pr prefer not to use that So just flying along the Menai Strait, looking for those bridges. Now the problem with the uh, Rex weather force is that when weather changes, it basically destroys your frame rate. And that seems to be a, a bug they were aware of, but I don't see them in a great hurry to fix it. The way around it, I believe, is to disable smooth transitions and just have instant changes between weather states which is not ideal but it's certainly a lot better than dropping uh, down to unusable frame rates okay, this is, I would say marginal VFR conditions I wouldn't want uh, visibility, I mean I can still see where I'm going, I can still see the ground, I'm under the clouds decent visibility but you don't want it to uh, reduce any greater than this so really the challenge at the moment is just to maintain at 1300 feet just keep checking the altitude looking for those landmarks I'm also using um, Rex Accu Seasons which is a pretty good utility for um, making the uh, landscape look a little bit more accurate for the year for the time of year uh, it's probably a little bit overpriced for what it is Rex Weather Force I'm not uh, I'm not sure about the price on Weather Force it's it, without the bug when uh, the weather changes I would say it's good value for money but right now I wouldn't say it's a complete replacement for default weather so I'm also using X, uh, ATC Chatter which for what it is is pretty good it's one of those products that you either like or don't like here so we've come come to the bridges but it adds a little bit of uh, ambience to the scene Okay, so now we've reached our destination. We shortly will turn back, fly back down the Menai Strait, it's a 20 degree turn to the right. Just watching that altitude, trying to keep the ball centered on the turn and bank indicator. So there's a Menai suspension bridge and the Britannia bridge. So you can see two obvious landmarks that we can't miss.
And at this point, we're just going to follow the Menai Strait all the way back to Carnarvon. So, join me again when we near Carnarvon. And welcome back. We are now approaching Carnarvon, or Carnarvon Airport. We've actually gone past Carnarvon itself. And the airport is just a little bit to our front left. It's anywhere about 1300 feet. And we're just uh, getting ourselves a line up for a turn onto, uh, onto a course to cross the runway threshold of runway 25. Heading book still set to runway heading. During a flight, you might have uh, engaged autopilot on heading and been manipulating the heading bug. So always remember to set heading bug back to runway heading when arriving at your destination. It always looks a little bit more atmospheric once you get uh, past clear weather. It's a temptation to include clear weather with zero wind to make life easy for yourself, but certainly makes it look a lot better when you have some weather uh, weather in this instance is a little bit uh, a little bit difficult I'm not quite sure on landing what the wind direction is because we don't have ATC at this point or ATIS I'm going by what I last looked at with Rex weather force which is I think it was it might have been coming from the left just from the front left, I think it might have been 240 at 12 knots. The weather was varying from 240 to about 260, 12 to 17 knots. So this is a little bit unusual. Normally on final you'd get clearance from ATC and it's, ATC would tell you wind direction and speed, but I'm having to guess a little bit with this. Okay, so we're flying a normal overhead pattern from this, uh, when approaching an airport from this direction. So as we cross runway threshold, we'll start that descent. Start descending down to 800 feet. We've been flying at 110 knots, which is a reasonable airspeed. Probably be looking at 120. Okay, so we're coming down we're letting down to uh, traffic pattern altitude and we're looking to fly parallel to the runway and then we'll cross the runway at the other end at 800 feet ok things start going a little bit wrong and I, I kind of left a little bit of a, well, a big mistake in here because I wanted to talk about the mistake and how you can get into those mistakes so it's ok putting forward perfect examples but I think we learn a lot from mistakes and I made a mistake and I understand why I made it and it's really a silly mistake but it does have consequences and I recover from it but I'll go for the mistake so we're flying the crosswind leg at the moment I'm going to turn on downwind now remember this is quite a short runway so you don't have a lot of time and I kind of forgot that it's a short runway. Plus, with track IR, I suddenly couldn't look over my right shoulder, so I couldn't judge distance to the runway, and I got flustered at that point. And that kind of just kind of interrupted me, if you if you understand what I mean. I kind of got out of sequence a little bit, so I make some mistakes. I make a lot of mistakes on the, at the end of uh, the downwind leg. I do recover from it, but it's, it is important to make sure that you have everything set up properly. So I needed to make sure track is always working properly, for one thing. So again, I get kind of really limited. Okay, so we're coming up to, I'm still turning too much. I'm not paying enough attention to heading boat because suddenly we have a much shorter runway than I'm, I'm used to flying recently. I get, I get flustered by that, I can't quite look over my shoulder properly, I'm not paying enough attention to heading bug, so I'm kind of making corrections because I'm overturning the aircraft, 
And I, I don't know what I was doing there, but I was, I was turning when I shouldn't have been turning. So now I'm trying to straighten out again. And I miss, I get out of sequence. So I'm not, I, I can't look properly over my right shoulder. So I miss turning the fuel pump back on. Okay, now I'm, I'm trying to get back into some sort of rhythm. I'm turning. I'm not quite sure of distance because I can't quite look properly over my right shoulder. So, But I think I'm at the right point to turn on the base. So I've get an extra stage of flaps in. And I turn too early onto final. So I'm turning way too early onto final and I kind of realise it and I'm trying to relax the turn out. But that all comes from not being quite as prepared as I should have been. I should have been thinking in terms of this is a shorter runway than what I'm used to flying recently so I need to be on top of that and I need to make sure that I can look okay I can look over my shoulder okay to be able to judge distance to the runway so you can see how just small mistakes can really kind of knock you out of sequence but here I am trying to just okay get myself back together again get myself straightened out look adding final approach flaps I've got three greens I've got uh, make sure and prop full forward okay now let's just concentrate on straightening it up and landing the aircraft but that's why I left that error in there just to, ex just to show you how quickly things can get away from you based on small mistakes suddenly you're kind of short of time and you're rushing things and that's when you make mistakes so here we are, I'm not quite sure which direction the wind's coming at. I know it's coming from the front, not quite sure, left or right. We've got two whites, I'm okay with that because there are obstacles on final approach. I'm low enough, you know, I'm, I'm judging this not just by the Vassy lights but also by the sight picture I've got and I'm okay on, on height. A little bit too quick, I should have been a little bit slower. But just trying to figure out what is the wind doing here. Backing off on the power rounding out and then I'm concentrating on keeping on center line I'm really trying hard to get onto center line flaring the aircraft a little bit of left aileron right rudder just touch down touch down main gear and then lowering the nose gear so considering the conditions about at least a 12 knot wind that's not a bad landing I'll take that so that is a little bit of pilotage, a little bit of overhead join and a circuit and a little bit of an explanation or an example of how small mistakes can get you flustered and you can start rushing things and making mistakes but even then you can still recover from that you just got to kind of take a breath and just get back into sequence so hope that uh, gave you some ideas on how you can expand your flying Okay. As we turn off the runway, we'll clean the aircraft up, flaps up, strobes off, fuel pump off, um, flaps up, yeah, and then just head off to park it. So yeah, hopefully that gave you some ideas as to how you can take those basic techniques of overhead joins and circuits and expand them into full flights uh, before then embarking on longer, more detailed VFR flights. So. Hope you enjoyed that. As I say, hope it gave you some ideas. And uh, as always, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe.